Welcome back to Small Caps, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kerry Stevenson, and today I'm speaking with the executive chairman of QMines. Mm. Name is Andrew Spark. Now, the QMines code is the ASX code is QML. QMines up in Queensland, great state. Uh, they have a, gr- a very interesting copper story. I'm going to let Andrew give us an update because it's been a while since we've had a chat. Andrew, thanks so much for your time. I know how busy you are because you guys listed in May of last year. Mm-hmm. You've had a couple of resource upgrades, but because we haven't spoken for a while, give us the brief overview and then we'll get into some detail. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me, Kerry. So, so look, we're going exceptionally well. So as, as you mentioned, we only listed in May last year. Uh, we've got four projects. It's all copper gold focused in Queensland. And, and why not be in Queensland? You know, 13 <laughs> tier one deposits, um, you know, you strip out Olympic Dam out of South Australia's production, it really is a state to be the biggest uh, state by copper production in Australia. Uh, so it's it's, a, it's really the, um, a very important part of the, the copper market in Australia. Um, we, we purchased in just before the listing in May, the Mount Chalmers historic gold mine, copper and gold mine. Uh, it's about 20 k's out of Rockhampton. It's right on the coast uh, and it's got some grade. It's, it's a fantastic deposit. And so... Uh, a lot of our activities since listing have been about growing this resource. So uh, we own our own rigs. We've been drilling like mad. Uh, and we've been doing a lot of step out work, and this resource is growing exceptionally well. So really exciting time to be a, a QMine shareholder, um, but a lot more to deliver um, in the coming weeks and months. Um, you just said a moment ago it's a fantastic deposit. Now, Andrew, you've been around this industry for quite some time. I want to know why does Andrew Sparks eyes light up when you're talking about Q mines and yeah. what it is that you've got your hands on? Because it was historically a mine. Yeah, exactly right. So it was mined uh, between 1980 and 82 as, a, as an open pit. So I've always looked for uh, brownfields assets. It generally means less risk. It generally means that they've um, you know they they, they tick all the, the risk boxes like metallurgy works. Um, grade is obviously not too bad, you know, it wasn't too deep. All those sort of things we look for when trying to find a deposit that's going to be economic. Uh, and and if you look back through, you know, the last sort of five years, a lot of the major discoveries or extensions to resources have, have occurred around what's called the head frame. So, uh, with you know, near mine type exploration. So it's about sort of balancing that risk to reward. Uh, and why not start where there's been a, you know, a very successfully mined deposit it, uh, it makes a lot of sense. But this one was a particularly high grade one. Uh, it produced about 2% copper, 3.6 grams gold, and 19 grams silver. So it's uh, that effectively means, um, you know, that it's, uh, you know, sh- ideally should have some quite strong economics uh, as we transition this towards a, a mining operation. How big is this area that you're looking at? Because it's not just Mount Chalmers. You've got some regional areas around it as well. What I'm looking to explain to our community, if you like, is where where what are Q mines doing right now? Because it's not just Mount Chalmers; it's ex, it, it's it's the regional part as well. Yeah, absolutely. Look, we've got a really big package up there. Uh, it's over 350 square k's, so it's a, it's a we basically have a whole belt. Um, this whole region is very well known for producing some of the highest grade, what we call V VHMS deposits. Uh, and they're a type of deposit that typically occur in clusters. So you see multiple deposits within a cluster. And it's not uncommon to see up to 40 individual deposits within in these sort of belts. So it's an exciting you know, place to explore from our perspective. But also BMS deposits are typically quite high grade. Okay? And that generally means that you know if you can find enough volume, you know, that the, the economics really look well and bode well for shareholder value. So um, so look at it, big, big area. Um, but what's really exciting from our perspective is we've already identified seven other deposits and, and prospects outside the Mount Chalmers uh, mine site. So uh, on our tenant package. So, uh, so you know, without saying too much, we're, we're really quite excited to start to move into the region. Um, so we get this next resource update out uh, likely next month. Uh, we, we want to start moving into the region uh, and start to drill some of these other deposits, which we think will continue to add uh, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot more volume as, as we go. How deep, uh, I want to understand the drilling and I guess the um, the strategy around the drilling, 350 square kilometres, it's decent. It's not the largest, but it's a decent size. How do you um, maximise shareholder funds 
when you've got this amount of space and what you just said before, lots of clusters, is it soil sampling? Is it uh, uh, digitizing maps? How are you making sure that the funds are spent wisely? Yeah, look, very good question. I suppose with exploration, um, you know, it's it's all about really, as you're alluding to, targeting these areas and making sure that you prioritise, you know, your drilling targets. We all know that drilling is expensive, so you, you really want to make sure that you know you know as much as you can about the region and um, and give yourself the best chance of success before you start drilling. So. So what we've done, we've, we've spent about 18 months just digitising a lot of historic data up here, okay? Why is that important? Well, it's it's cheap, you know. We've we've now got, um, I think it's 40,000, uh, 40 to 60,000 metres of historic drilling uh, in our 3D um, database, and it's cost us very little, uh, whereas to go and drill that today is, you know, you know, tens of millions of dollars. So, so it's a really good place to start. Uh, we've now digitised about 80 historic uh, maps um, from, from geologists in the past that have walked the ground and, and, and mapped the different structures. So we know a lot about the structural complexity of this, this region. Um, so we're overlaying structural, you know, structural mapping, um, you know, soil sampling where we've got, I think, I think there's 170,000 soil samples um, completed in, in this region. So, um, and, and, and we're now starting to look at actually um, putting another layer on that, which will be EM data. So um, basically that, that means electromagnetic data and it'll look at things like the chargeability of the rocks, um, magnetic data will look at structure in rocks. And so when we get all these different layers laid over the top, um, it really helps us to target the, the, the right sort of areas to that are going to give you the highest, I suppose, chance of success. So, so that's how we sort of try and do it cost effectively. Uh, we've got a great team um, here that have done this before. Um, yeah, many of your listeners will know that we uh, we obviously um, you know executed a similar plan uh, in WA where we we basically added I think six resource updates in two years at a historic gold mine in WA um, uh, before selling to a large private equity group uh, in I think it was September 2020. So. So we've got a great geological team that knows how to, you know, um, knows how to discover, knows how to, you know, add volume uh, and and progress these sort of assets. So um, so we're we're working on a lot of that at the moment. Uh, but what's really exciting from my perspective is um, we've actually got three of these seven deposits in the region. Would you believe it? they're actually already drilled? So uh, drilled historically. So uh, what that means is we only need a small amount of modern day, you know, they call it confirmatory drilling. Mm -hmm. um, you, know, um, you know, to basically convert those uh, three deposits into resource. So, so as well as this next resource update that we have coming from the Mount Chalmers site, where we've we've been drilling all year, um, which which we're quite excited about, we've got three other of these deposits that, that still aren't in resource. So, and we've just started drilling uh, the first of those wood shaft um, recently. So. Yeah, so this is growing really nicely. Um, you know, we've, we've got a lot more, a lot of news flow on the way. Um, and, and I think people are going to start to see that this is a really high quality asset, um, you know, that's that's got a lot of growth potential. What's the drilling showing you, Andrew? Because um, once you start the drilling, it, it gives you, a, I guess, a better indication. First of yeah. two questions. How deep yeah. are you going? Yeah. Um, and are you going a lot deeper than it has historically ever been done before? And what's it showing you? Is it getting higher grade at depth? Yeah. Are they wide widths? What can you tell us about the style of this deposit? Yeah, sure. All right. Well, I suppose to really understand this this type of deposit, you've got to think of, um, you know, if you hold up your fingers, you've got to think of a number of these, you know, intrusive type um, deposits that have come up. So they've, they've come up, it's a volcanic area. They've come up with generally forms um, under the sea floor where you're seeing molten material come up in a number of deposits and they spill out over the sea floor. So when, when you sort of get that, um, when you sort of start to understand that, you'll you'll start to understand the geology here. So it's quite a flat lying ore body. As okay. I said, it's formed on the sea floor. Um, and, and effectively, we've got a, a massive sulfide cap, which is quite um, rich in, in copper, lead, zinc and silver. Uh, and then we've got a stringer zone under that. Um, so they're quite flat lying um, uh, and with the string of zone is largely sort of copper and gold dominant. Um, but what's what's really important from, I suppose, um, shareholders' perspective is, you know, it's it's close to surface. 
you know, it's it's wide, so we're, we're, it's not uncommon to see 60 metre widths um, up here. So you've got very big mining widths, and it's really hot, you know, really good grade. So the historic resource was 1.7% copper equivalent. Um, and I know that's sort of hard to conceptualise for some people, but if you think about today, most of the copper around the world has been mined at sort of, you know, half a percent or slightly greater. You know, this is quite a high grade deposit. So, um, so we've, as I say, we've got a combination of good grade, um, shallow ore body, very good mining widths that's still open in a number of directions. So, so we expect that that'll start to bode well as we start to move into the scoping study, which we're going to start the process, um, you know, in January of next year. So, um, so yeah, so we're, we're quite excited about where that Mount Chalmers mine is going. Uh, but we, we really see that as a starting point. We've still got seven other of these deposits that, um, that we want to start to test. And, you know, if, we, if they start to come up, um, then it, it really is game on. So, Do you think <clears throat> some of those other deposits are going to be Mount Charmer lookalikes? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, look, we're, we've obviously done a fair bit of work on this. We've put a, quite a few announcements out uh, on our, um, particularly there's four very, very large um, copper and gold soil anomalies, and, sorry, copper and zinc soil anomalies. And, um, you know, it's not uncommon to see, you know, um, kilometre, you know, a couple of kilometres by a couple of kilometres sort of breadth and width, you know, um, soil signatures with very high tenor or, you know, grade for soil sampling. So we've got four of these. Um, one's called, we've got striker one, two and three and, and uh, sorry, tracker one, two and three and striker. So, <laughs> but they look big. They, they really look big. So, you know, obviously we've got to do a bit more work on them. Uh, and we'll have some more to say about that in the coming weeks. Um, but I'd really encourage you, your, your viewers to, to look, watch closely because, you know, if we find another one of these Mount Chalmers lookalikes, you know, um, I, I think that's, that's where... game changer. Really exciting, yep. Um, <clears throat> Andrew, can we go macro for, for a moment, if you don't oh. mind? Uh, yeah. Because the copper market has come off a little bit. Yep. As has your share, uh, your, your share price. Um, you listed in May of last year. There's been a weakness in your share price. Um, I want to know: is that because people don't understand what it is you've got your hands on, or the market's a little bit fed up, or yep. is it a result of the overall copper malaise, if you like? Look, you you are exactly right. So this is a sector wide issue. Okay, so. For those of you who sort of follow the copper space, the, the demand outlook looks really exciting. Uh, obviously, we're moving to it. As everyone talks about this energy transition. I don't need to, you know, um, tell your listeners about that. I think everyone hears that at nauseam. But um, the demand side looks really exciting in at a time when we've got very, you know, constrained supply, particularly out of South America, where graves declining, where there's more more issues, um, you know, uh, with labour and, and getting, you know. Anyway, we'll, we'll, that's a whole other whole other topic, but but I think if you look at the ASX or any other exchange, you'll see from January uh, all the copper stocks have come off, and it really is a sector wide um, you know problem. Um, you know, basically for the top, I, I, I read a research report recently looking at the top twelve, uh, and they're off you know on average about fifty percent. So it's it's a it's a really you know um, tough market in the copper space at the moment, but we really see that as a great opportunity. So. Our stock prices, for example, um, you know, we list at 30 cents. Uh, I think today we're at 16 cents. So, um, you know, it's, it's really a great entry point, particularly when you um, factor in that we've actually, this, this asset has been growing really nicely. A team have really delivered uh, on what we've, on our objectives from the IPO. Uh, and we've got potentially, you know, certainly one more resource upgrade um, uh, this year and potentially another shortly thereafter at Woodshaft. So, so, you know, we've, as a management team, we've really, you know, if we get those four resource updates out in, you know, 15, 16 months of listing, I think you get a, a sense that, um, you know, the project's coming on really nicely, but, you know, we're, we're half our IPO price. So, so as I said, it's a, it's a sector-wide issue um, and it's not just a, you know, the small cap end, it's really from, from large caps down. So, um, but, you know, I think what we'll see is as, you know, there's obviously some economic clouds out there at the moment. So yep. many of your listeners will know that, you know, um, they call it Dr. Copper when when, <laughs> when there's a sort of global downturn sort of forming, you know, copper typically comes off. But what, what a lot of people haven't realised is that the Australian dollar has been a really nice hedge here. Um, 
you know, obviously the Australian dollar has come back to 63 cents today. Um, many of you, your listeners, again, will know that the, the top of the copper market in Australian dollar terms was about 13.50 a tonne. We're at, we're at sort of, you know, 11.20 a tonne. So, it, you know, even though, you know, if you look at the screen in US dollars, it looks looks like a bloodbath. In Australian dollars, it's really um, it's really hung in there. So, so we're very optimistic about where, you know, uh, where we are today. Uh, we've got some big announcements on the way. Uh, we're going to continue to grow that resource. Um, and, and, you know, I think as, as we sort of get through this short term, you know, um, downturn, I think, you know, people will get back on the, on the bandwagon of where is all this copper coming from and yeah. how are we, how are we going to deliver it for all the CG uh, energy, you know, transition. So I think that's right. And, um, I think there is a challenge for supply. There's growing demand. Mm. What do you think, Andrew, just before we go back fully into Q mines, what do you think is going to light a fire under the copper price? Is it that sudden realisation, that dawning realisation that yeah. there's copper out there? Yeah. Well, that's right. You, you see a lot of stats, you know, when, when doing research into this, you know, we need um, our biggest copper mine is, is a, a, a mine that's um, in, in Chile and we need to find 30 of those before 2030 to <laughs> just keep up with demand. So, you know, but then you look at the discovery rate. We haven't found a tier one copper deposit for over ten years. So, you know, it's it's a really you know it's a really funny funny space. But look, I I think um, you know back to your question. I think it's it could come from two um, two angles. One, we could see um, you know a, a con- I mentioned constrained supply. Um, as as I sort of alluded to before, you see. Um, you know, a lot of those big mines in Chile and Peru, which are forty percent of the market, are uh, right up in the Andes, and and those mines are declining in grade. They're having issues with labour moving up into into those higher higher you know, mountainous areas. Um, they're having issues with water. A lot of them are desalinating water at the coast and trying to pump wow. it up um, into the into the Andes. Um, so there's there's a lot of problems. Um, you know, not to mention tax and nationalisation sort of issues in Chile and, and Peru at the moment. So so, you know, I think you, you may start to see um, a supply squeeze, um, uh, but, but uh, you know, conversely, I think everyone recognises that there's uh, strong demand on the horizon um, as we get back, uh, as we sort of get through this sort of, you know, short-term downturn um, back into a, a growing economy and, and certainly this transition towards a, a greener, greener world. So. Andrew, you said uh, you alluded um, a little while ago to the time that you took Alt and worked really hard and got resource upgrades out and it was taken over by private equity. I, yeah. I want to know um, the, from a shareholder point of view, from that sort of value add, is yeah. that your strategy with Q Mines to, to, to build it up, to, to increase the resource, to show that this <clears throat> can be developed, it yeah. does have a proper copper resource, and yeah. then... To let somebody else take it over and build build the mine. Yeah, look, good question. Obviously, we've got a very strong uh, exploration capability uh, internally. We've got a very strong development capability, uh, but at the moment, we don't have a strong mining capability. And I'll just be really candid um, you know, in talking about that. It doesn't mean we can't transition the board and the management team you know, as we get these next you know resource updates out and, and move towards development. Um, so that, that's certainly something we can do. But you're right, there's really two ways to execute this plan, just talking really broadly. You know, one is to take it through to production and cash flow, um, and the other is to, you know, grow the, uh, grow the resource, um, you know, de-risk it as much as possible, um, you know, get it through the feasibility studies and try and get as many, as many bidders, uh, you know, um, in, in, the, in the market as possible so, and to sell it. So, um, so look, I think... We've obviously done the, the um, we've sold the, the old business very successfully. We've got a very strong premium to the then share price uh, by creating a lot of competitive tension around that sale. Um, but I'm really excited about this. Um, I just put another 250 grand in the, the last place with myself. Oh, okay. That's good to know. Really, yeah, I, I think this has got a lot bigger potential, a lot bigger potential than, than we had at all. So, um, so, so, you know, our team is really just head down, focusing on delivering these next resource updates, uh, and we'll start to transition into into development. You know, uh, next year. Um, you know, obviously, a scoping study plan to commence in in January. So, uh, all the while, continuing to do a lot of exploration to try and find you know more of these uh, more of these deposits, and also convert 
those known deposits into resource. So, so yeah, I, I really think this could be a lot bigger. So this um, is this um, is a busy time, but you know what, uh, ladies and gentlemen, one of the things that I'm not sure. Let me just repeat it. Andrew's put his own money in. You bought on market. You're there saying, you know what, there's there's upside here, and and you're ready to put. You've got skin in the game, which I think is absolutely key. Yeah, that's right. I think it's important to lead from the front, um, you know, and uh, and I'll, I'm pleased to see that some of our other staff and key management have been have been doing something similar. So, um, so yeah, I think you know that really was a good show. A lot of our shareholders have followed us from the old story and, and previous things we've done before. So, um, you know, you, you've got to be in the trenches with them and and um, and show that you you know it's not just. Uh, it's not just lip service. We really think we've got something quite special here. So yeah, well, you want to make it uh, as much as you're in it with all the other shareholders, Andrew. Yeah. Um, between now and January, which is when the scoping study is coming out, is it mainly the focus on the exploration, drilling the sort of the outside Mount Chalmers? Is that what the focus is? Yeah. So we've now drawn a line in the sand for the cutoff for the Mount Chalmers resource, our third resource update. So that that drilling around the mine site has finished for the resource work. Um, we, we've recently just moved the rig down to um, a wood shaft, which we announced uh, the last couple of weeks, uh, and that that drilling is coming to an end at the moment. So, um, so we, we, we've, we're starting to hand a lot of that um, our drilling data over to our independent resource geologists to start to prepare that resource for mid-November, which we flagged in our last announcement would uh, would come out. Uh, but we're also working towards a fourth resource update, which will obviously. Um, it, we've alluded to in, a, in, in our announcements um, will obviously come from the Woodshaft prospect. So, um, so yeah, so it's an exciting time. We've, you know, if we can deliver, you know, four resource, four resources effectively, um, you know, in sort of 15, 16 months of listing, I think um, that'll really demonstrate that, um, that things are going really well. So that's been, it's been a busy year. It's been heads down and um, really had to focus hard to get that, uh, get that delivered, but um, it's all looking good at this point. So. Well, Andrew, we're running out of time. Uh, You're running hard. You've got lots of, guys, there's a lot of news flow coming up as we head into Christmas. But, Andrew, um, everyone knows I like to wrap things up, if you like, in a bow. I want to be able to um, summarise, if you like, for our listeners out there, why they should be sitting up and taking notice of Q Mines right now. Only three. I'm going to put one in at the beginning, which is management have skin in the game, ladies and gentlemen. That, to me is a big tick. Andrew, over to you for the three. Right. I, look, I think it's quite simple. Scarcity of quality copper development stories. You know, we're in Australia, we're right near the coast, uh, we're growing the resource and, you know, I, I think it's, you know, it's really heading in the right direction. So that's number one. Number two, we've got really exciting news flow on the way. So I mentioned before, there's two resource updates we're working on. The next one will be out mid-November, so it's relatively imminent. Um, and, and anyone who's seen our drilling results this year will know that they've been pretty spectacular. So more of that on the way. Um, but I think that the, the third thing, the most important thing that you touched on is coppers on the nose, okay? And if, if the whole premise is buy low, sell high, it really is a great time to be investing in the copper stocks. You know, I mentioned earlier that a lot of them are off 50% plus. So, um, you know, it really is, you know, even though we've delivered on our milestones from uh, the prospectus at IPO, and, and certainly probably even exceeded a lot of those. Um, we're half the value we were at IPO. So it really is a great time to get get set uh, in Q-Mines, um, which, which obviously has a lot more growth um, with these resources and certainly starting to look at how we transition this to production. So two big sort of pricing catalysts. And nothing has changed. In fact, if anything, uh, there is a continuing resource upgrade for the project. So if you're listing at 30 cents and people liked it at that stage, nothing has changed, ladies and gentlemen. It's just the market as psychology at the moment. Oh, of <laughs> a little bit a little bit off. It, I guess, Andrew, it's almost like going into the department store and seeing things for half price going, I'll have two. Thank you that's, very much. That's right. No, that's right. But look, thanks everyone for your support. It's been great. Um, you know, I think uh, I think we've got a really exciting sort of you know three to six months ahead. So, and thanks for yours as well, Kerry. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us on Small Caps today. Come back when you've got that resource upgrade, and let's have another chat. That's great.